Hello, welcome to the second semester generic English course. I am Dr. Vidya Patil, serving as Associate Professor of English at Government First Grade College for Women, Bidar. I will be guiding and assisting you during this course. In the previous video, we had begun reading and understanding the interview of Dr. Vandana Shiva by IDR, that is India Development Review. Um, in today's video, we will continue with this interview and try to understand more about Dr. Vandana Shiva's work in the field of food diversity. The next question in the interview was, what led you to shift your focus full time to this work? Vandana Shiva replies that she was invited by the Ministry of Environment to conduct a study on limestone mining in Masuri Hills in 1982. As a result of the speech which Indira Gandhi had given at the IAS Academy in Masuri, where she had said that the queen of the hills is being stripped naked. This had made the entire bureaucracy move and they had approached them for this study. As per the women of the villages, the key issue was water. When she studied the hydrogeological map, she found that the springs and limestone both were exactly on the same belt. So she told the government to change their approach from worrying about the ugly appearance of the hills to the ecological impact of mining. While mining limestone, nature's aquifer is being removed. The limestone which is left in the mountain created a bigger economy by supplying water than the limestone extracted as raw material for factories. This study then went on to become the basis of the Supreme Court's ruling on the mining case. It said, when commerce destroys life, commerce must stop because life has to carry on under Article 21 of the Constitution. After mining was discontinued because of their study, she was filled with hope that she was able to do this. She decided to dedicate it herself to this work and thus founded the Research Foundation for Science, Technology and Ecology in her mother's vacant cowshed. She was then asked, when and why did you start looking at GMOs? Vandana Shiva says that in 1987, she was invited to a meeting on biotechnology in Bogev in France and Geneva in Switzerland. They said that they were not making enough money from chemicals and the green revolution, so they needed to apply new techniques of splicing genes to sell GMOs or genetically modified organisms. Doing this would allow them to secure their future growth because they could patent the GMO seeds and collect royalties from farmers. Their focus would be to expand to the countries where the biggest markets and the largest numbers of farmers were there. So they needed a global treaty in place to impose patented seeds. That is why Intellectual Property Rights, IPR, World Trade Organization, WTO, General Agreement on Trade in Services, GATS, and other such um, organizations came into the picture. They wanted to limit this to a total of just five companies that would control food and health globally. Today there are four, the Poison Cartel. When she was asked about the safety of the GMOs, uh, when she asked them about the safety of the GMOs, they responded saying, if we wait for that, we will be left behind. We can't afford to stop. So she started her own non-profit organization, Navadhanya, and taught herself about seeds and seed saving. Back then, she didn't think they would have a 120 community seed bank. But she never gave up hope in her mind and heart. The next question in the interview was, 
you have taken on global conglomerates like Monsanto and others in the fight for biodiversity. Can you tell us about some of those experiences and what it takes to counter the narrative, especially when it is backed by power and money? She replies that the big guys have stamina and a lot more money, but their stamina comes only from the money, not from individual energies. To keep fighting them, it takes fearlessness. But according to Vandana Shiva, if something, uh, that is something which we cultivate within ourselves. One of the things which she says that her parents taught her was, if you live by your conscience, there is nothing you will ever be afraid of. So she says that she learned how to overcome her fears and was not afraid to face anyone. She says that for individuals it takes knowing your own truth. For society it takes nourishing the truth. It's young people and children who are leading this movement. The young are facing three main closures. The planetary closure, that is, they are really scared of climate change. Then there is the growth closure. That is an outdated idea that we must destroy the planet to grow and after that we can save the planet. And finally the economic closure which Mark Zuckerberg has said how within a few decades 99% of humanity will be useless and displaced by artificial intelligence and robotics. The development narrative that things are going to better is not rubbing off. The next question was, go, so what is today's development narrative and what does an alternate paradigm look like? Dr. Shiva replies that people have forgotten that development is not an economic term. It's a biological, ecological term. Structural transformation from within is development. Externally imposed coercive change is not. So, it is very necessary that we understand this basic difference. In 1948, the president of the World Bank brought in a new notion of development. He said we need to go and develop other nations. That is when things started to go completely wrong. Development evolves from within. When you do it to others, it needs a different name. She calls it colonization. The practice of extracting, reducing the original to raw material, transforming it into an inferior product and selling the improved developed substitute to what you had anyway is not development. She says that in Dehradun, it was the mining of limestone. With the Chipko movement, it was the mining of timber. And Vandana responded to it in her fight against Monsanto where it was the mining of genes and biodiversity. They took the genes from India and sold it back as a modified GMO with a patent. And today what we have is the mining of our thoughts and behaviors for data. Vandana Shiva feels the development discourse today must be about reclaiming autonomy and reclaiming sovereignty. All the movements she had built were about Swaraj, Beej Swaraj, that is seed sovereignty, Anna Swaraj, food sovereignty, Jal Swaraj, water sovereignty, Bhu Swaraj, land sovereignty. And it works. So when they were trying to privatize the Ganga, they built a movement across the country fighting land grab which triggered the Land Acquisition Amendment Act. Vandana Shiva states that she has learned from participating in the Chipko movement that it is time for the development community to go where people are hurting most. They must do this to learn and to understand what the development issues are today so that in solidarity as democratic societies, 
we can create endedness for the common ground upholding diversity she is then asked how would you like to be remembered by the future generations what would you like your legacy to be vandana shiva says that she would like to be remembered as someone who never gave up her truth and lived by her conscience she would also like to be remembered for her courage courage not as an isolated atom in and of herself but compassionate courage in solidarity very often her own description of herself is that she is an activist but for her the most important part of herself is her mind and so she hopes a legacy all would also be some of the thoughts she had thought and the connections she had made such as her connection between quantum theory and the chipko movement she also wants to be remembered as her son's mother she was once in tamil nadu and some women came running to her and said that protesters against the destruction of the coast were being arrested she just went there to help them and stood in front of them in order to protest when she did this she felt like an umbrella for other vulnerable people just like a mother would do for a child so this is what her mother would has taught her and she says that she would always love to be remembered as a mother after reading this interview we realize that dr vandana shiva is not just a scientist a physicist an eco ecological activist but also a woman who wants to bring about radical change and who wants to protect the ground trodden and the uh, people the people who are suffering the most we realized from the interview that she is very worried about the future generations and wants to preserve the nature so that the next generation can also benefit from it at the finally at the end of the interview she expresses her wish that she would always love to be remembered as somebody who had never who always spoke the truth and who was like a mother to the to her child who protected everyone from danger you may now have got a good idea about who dr vandana shiva is and how she is continuously fighting for various causes i hope you like this video thank you